Welcome to African Insights. Let's explore the truth about Africa. African Insights, please kindly subscribe and like the channel. In black and white, we will narrate the true African story. Before we jump into today's topic of African cosmology, we would like to take you back to the heritage site of the cradle of humankind, declared a world heritage site in 1999. Our journey begins in South Africa, where fossils of some of the earliest known life forms on Earth has been found. South Africa has yielded some of the earliest known dinosaurs, dating back at least 200 million years. Africa is the birthplace of humankind. This is where our collective umbilical cord lies buried. Great African ancient civilizations were the first to observe the heavens and chronicle their observations. When studying their history, that was the epicenter of culture, technology and civilization. They studied everything in their environment from planet Earth and beyond. Africa is the oldest presence of science, history, culture, knowledge, religion, philosophy of any people on the planet Earth. That is our African heritage. That is our legacy. We are connected to over 10,000 generations of African greatness. If we were to track the origins of the African calendar, we would begin by remembering in as much as in South Africa the 24th of September is Heritage Day. It is in many indigenous cultures two days away from the African New Year. The African New Year coincides with the spring equinox. It's a very significant point in the solar calendar which will take place on the 22nd of September. South Africa is home to the oldest known sacred site in the world to track the movement of the sun in Zalo Yelanga. On the 22nd of September, getting into our spring equinox, what many cultures call New Year, the New Year is linked to astronomical phenomena or phenomena related to the lunar cycle. Where the cycles of the moon are observed on this day, there will be equal day and night. In Zaloyelanga is the oldest stone calendar in the world, older than the Stone Age, which was popularized in the UK. Older even than the Napta player, which is in ancient Egypt and predates these two calendars by more than 70,000 years. It shows not only the cradle of humankind, but the cradle of wisdom in that sites such as these mark the equinox, marks the solstice, mark the calendars, telling us how we harvest, how we relate in society, how we relate in our relationship with the celestial beings, with the stars and the planet. What we as African know as Inzalo Yelanga, others have termed it the Adams calendar. Put simply, African cosmology is the way Africans perceive, conceive, and contemplate their universe, the lens through which they see reality, which affects their value system and attitudinal orientations. South Africa's great Sanusi Baba Krido Mutwa was therefore initiated here in 1936 and we give credit to him for the knowledge that he has kept and he has passed on to us regarding Inzalo Yelanga. We now move to another important site in South Africa, Mapungu. There are elderly people in villages around Mapungu who call it Tabayabodimu, the place of ancestors. A similar cognitive cosmological principle of spatial organization is found at Mapungube. 
and that invokes speculation of a royal burial in the eastern aspect of the main hilltop settlement and a divination bowel burial in the western aspect. Stars are mainly used as agricultural temporal markers to predict weather, signify ritual times, and provide omens and ancestral endorsements to the living. Settlement patterns are dependent on the solar and lunar movement through the ecliptic and records are common to all through narratives, songs, and practices. The stones in Mapungube were unfortunately removed by Leo Frobenius and other later desecrators of one of the most sacred burial sites in SA. The most intriguing aspect of these destroyed artifacts is that some may have had cosmic references. We now will take a closer look at divination bowels. The first one we have just lighted, the one that is found in Mapungube, and now we shall move on to the great Zimbabwe. What we have here is the zodiac bow found in the great Zimbabwe ruins. The practice of divination bowels for astronomy and the diffusion of the geomancy and the elaborate golden bowl found at Mapungube and the bowels found at Great Zimbabwe as well as the many divination bowels described in the ethnography form a persistent link of evidence of astronomical studies. From the viewpoint of the platform area, the small conical tower and monolith on the wall at Great Zimbabwe reveal a rudimentary solar, lunar, and sidereal calendar. Venus is seen to appear and disappear in its synodic cycle from the same location. The two monoliths immediately either side coincidentally mark Saif and Bellatrex of Orion. A survey made at Great Zimbabwe infers a pre-outer walling phase that used a platform as observation point and a small conical tower to mark the equinoxes. A later outer wall then blocked observation of the horizon from the platform. Stelia placed in the outer wall replaced the celestial positions on the horizon of planetary movements and the sun. A large conical tower exceeds the height of the outer wall and provides one more cosmic reference. The relationship between Venus and the Sun is vital to the Shona, Lemba, Venda astronomical indigenous knowledge traditions and is actually seen as the indicator for the different rain periods. From this ancient southern civilization, we know that it further migrated northernwards in Africa. Thus, when you go to Ethiopia, you will find a calendar. And when you go to the great ancient Kemet, known as Egypt, you will further find more zodiac calendars. Since we were focusing largely today on the southern region, we will therefore not cover the other zodiac calendars, the other cosmologies found in Africa. All we would like to do now is thank you for watching this episode and we do hope that you actually subscribe and you like. Thank you. Do continue to support us.